Hello, this is Ulysses from SSW TV, and I'm here speaking with Dave Paler from Empired, and we're talking about Power BI. So, Dave, tell me a bit about yourself. Who are you? What do you do? Sure, okay. I'm a, a principal consultant with Empired, um, so I've been working with data and such. I used to work, in fact, before I moved to Australia, I used to work for an Australian company called CoreView, which is an old um, Power BI, uh, sorry, a, uh, a BI and performance management company. So, I've got a, a good background history in data and and SharePoint things, um, but I, in my spare time, I'm a, a skipper with Marine Rescue, so I'm a volunteer there, uh, and also a volunteer CIO there, but of course it's a role with no budget and a volunteer role that I do in my spare time, so not quite as great as it sounds, but uh, still an interesting thing to do. Right, excellent. So I came to your talk yesterday, and I've been playing around with Power BI a bit myself, uh, and I love it, I've, I've done a lot of kind of tinkering, um, but I'm just wondering, what would you say that Power BI doesn't do so well? What, what are the holes? Oh, that's a good question. So um, it's really not a tool for producing paper-based reports. So if you want to do printed reports, then I'd recommend you use something like SQL Server Reporting Services. Um, it's very much an interactive tool. It's very much a dynamic tool. So it's a clicking, playing, doing, um, you know, drawing you in to do things with the thing on the screen. But yeah, not, not so good for the hard copy type reports. Okay, so you'd still use reporting services for that? Absolutely, yeah. Reporting services is a great choice if you still want hard copy type printed reports. All right, beautiful. So what, what are the main strengths of Power BI over reporting services? Uh, yeah, so I, I, I think it's very much a, an end user reporting tool. So it's, it's giving that ability to use, anybody who can use Excel can pretty much use, use Power BI. Mm. And, and that ability to generate stuff that is so interactive, that is so dynamic, that and having multiple views on a screen that are all interrelated, so you know, just click on one and it affects all the others, that, that is just such a powerful visualization representation of the data. Okay. All right, so um, with reporting services at the moment, I've got like a directory I can go to, I can see all my reports, I can search through them, find them. How would you do that with Power BI? How do you make them accessible to people to see? Okay, yeah, that's a good question too. So. In, when you publish um, something, so you, d you develop something using the, the, the desktop tool, when you then publish it to either SQL 2016 reporting services internally or to the cloud service, um, then you can choose to share that and you can share your dashboard, share your reports, share your data sources. Um, so when an individual accesses Power BI um, through the waffle menu, for example, mm -hmm. from Office 365, um, then they'll see the content that's shared with them and they can access it directly that way. You can also publish publicly, um, so you can publish um, a, a view to the internet um, that could potentially be shared on your website. Okay. So that you know that's public accessible data. Obviously, that's not necessarily what you want to do with your internal yeah. data, but um, worth bearing in mind. But there's also a, a whole set of APIs, so you can actually you know pull content directly from Power BI and then s uh, render it into web pages, etc. As an embedded thing? Embedded content, absolutely. Right. Can you make them searchable? Can you, like, for instance, if you go into your intranet in SharePoint, can you search for report names and find them there? Um, if you've got, yeah, so if you had a, a page, for example, then you could have titles and things that were the names of your reports and search for those on your oh, okay, pages. so set them up as separate embedded absolutely. things with the title and then yeah. that would be searchable. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, so um, we're talking about reports at the moment. What about dashboards? When would you use a report? When would you use a dashboard? Okay, so a dashboard lets you collate a lot of information together in one place. So it lets you pin content from individual reports. So on a Power BI report, you could have maybe, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight different visualizations, and you can pin one of those visualizations from that one report onto a dashboard and then pin another visualization from a different report onto a dashboard. So the dashboard itself isn't interactive, but when you click on a, a, a pinned item on the dashboard, it takes you directly to the interactive report. Okay. So the dashboard is letting you collate in bits of information from multiple reports. Um, so it's, it's, it's a great way of pulling together a summary of information, and then you drill down from there into the actual interactive detail. So would you, on a day-to-day -day basis, would you use the, just use the dashboard as a way to navigate to the right report, or is it a piece of information itself that you share and check regularly? I'd, I'd say both. So yeah, it, it can be a sort of, as you say, almost a navigation tool to get to where you want to get to, but it's presenting useful information as well. Hmm. So it's a combination of the two. Okay. All right, beautiful. I've got some techie questions on that I might oh, ask you later. Okay. All right, beautiful. So last thing, um, there's two ways to make Power BI reports. You can do them through the desktop client or you can do them through the web client. Yep. Which do you recommend and why? 
Okay, so the desktop client is is more powerful, um, has a lot more flexibility and a lot more things you can do with it, but the, the web tool is increasing in cap capability all the time. So Microsoft are constantly releasing new features, new functions, which is extending the, the, um, the web-based capability. So I would, I would imagine at some point you're gonna get more or less parity between the desktop and the, the web client, okay. but at the moment I'd say the desktop is the more powerful tool for developing things. All right, excellent. No problem. Great, thank you very much. Great to see you. That was uh, Ulysses here from SSW TV. Thank you very much, Dave. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.